summary of formulae that you should remember. So we have the sum from k equals 1 to n of k, and we figured out that's equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. The sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared, and we figured out that's equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And this last one, k equals 1 to n of k cubed, the sum of that, turns out that's equal to n squared times n plus 1 squared divided by 4. And we didn't derive that, but um, I gave you a method for how to derive it, so you can do that as an optional exercise. Now I said summary of formula you should remember. Um, that's not entirely true. You will get given it on your MF19 formula sheet, but I would hope that by the time the exam rolls around, you've done enough practice so that they're uh, fairly familiar to you. The distributive property. The distributive property of sigma can be extended to more complex expressions. So realistically, you just need to understand this thing here. You need to make sure you know why this is true. It's probably fairly obvious already, but just in case it isn't, um, we already used it in the previous exercise to derive that formula. Um, so let's just take a quick look at it, because you really need to understand what it is and why it works this way. So this is a sum. It means we take k equals 1, we put it into this expression. Then we take k equals 2, we put it into this expression. And then we take k equals 3, put it into this expression. And we keep adding them together until we get up to n. c, d, e, and f are just constant numbers. So it would look like this. c times 1 cubed plus d times 1 squared plus e times 1 plus f. And then we would do the next one, um, 2. So it would be c times 2 cubed plus d times 2 squared plus e times 2 plus f. And then the next one, c times 3 cubed plus d times 3 squared plus e times 3 plus f, and so on all the way up to the last one, which would be n. So it would be c times n cubed plus d times n uh, squared. I guess I should put the 3 on the outside. doesn't really matter, but got to keep everything consistent. So e times n plus f. Okay, and then we add all of these things together. And we can see that... In this column here, we're going to get c times 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed all the way up to plus n cubed. Because it doesn't matter what order we add these things in. We're adding everything together. So it doesn't matter whether we add like this or across. And then over here, we're clearly going to have d times 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n squared. And then clearly it's going to be e times 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. And then finally it's just going to be n lots of f. So n times f. And then from here we just remember what the definitions of those summations are. So this is c times the sum from k equals 1 to n of k cubed plus d times the sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared plus e times the sum from k equals 1 to n of just k and then lastly plus n times f. Okay. And, uh, well, over here I just wrote n times f. Hopefully it's pretty clear that the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 is equal to n. Because it's just 1 plus 1 plus, plus 1 n times. And, of course... Uh, we know 
the formula for this one, we know the formula for this one, we know the formula for this one, and we know the formula for this one. This one here is actually just n. So that means we can take some big complicated looking sum like this and we can simplify it down into something that is entirely in terms of formulas that we already know. So yeah, that is the distributive property and we're going to use it to solve uh, summation of series problems.